All right, guys, welcome back. So let's get into it. <clears throat> I'm going to go through some charts, uh, stock market technical analysis here. Today, I'm not seeing any signs uh, that are helping with the bearish case. So I'm going to go ahead and go through that, try to uh, really try to call out maybe what I'm looking to do and uh, where I see potential trades. I, you know, the market's been... The market's been very resilient. It's been grinding higher. Uh, a lot of the times the moves are being made in the futures market and then it's grinding higher on low volume. So that is a setup to, um, you know, for a swift move down. However, until we see something that can potentially start that move down, the market can continue to grind higher. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing the market move higher uh, you know, in the futures overnight, and then we're seeing it kind of grind higher during the trading day on low volume. So you can see here on the SP, you know, the S&P 500, we're at resistance right now. Here's resistance uh, 312. We're basically right there at resistance. That was that was the first area when we came down in the last crash where we popped up, and that held as resistance right there. So. And there's no real reason why that was the area. I don't see anything that really indicates that being as a, a key area um, from before. But ultimately, that was the area that it held on the daily chart. And then we crashed down. So we've come all the way back to that area. And uh, actually, I believe that's the Fibonacci um, retracement level. Let me check that out. Yeah, it looks like that falls right there, um, a key re Fibonacci retracement level. Um, so we're there. There's, you know, the market sliced through all the FIB levels so far. So that is a re uh, that is a resistance level right now. We'll see if that even means anything. Um, obviously, the market is short term bullish. We continue to move higher, continue to grind higher, and there's really no signal of a reversal yet. We don't have any kind of candlestick reversal pattern or or, or really anything. So. We're going to watch for that. There is the potential for a reversal to take place because we're moving higher on this low volume. Um, you know, that that if you get any kind of selling volume come in that comes in, it could wipe out that, um, you know, this move up. But until then, continues to move higher. Let's look at the hourly chart. So I we do have this rising wedge that we created on the hourly chart. It just recently was put in and we broke down, but it wasn't impulsive and we've been back testing or moving higher from underneath. You can see today, we've basically just been kind of grinding higher uh, right below that, that resistance line on that bearish rising wedge. So again, until we see any kind of signal, I just don't see, you know, I'm just not seeing anything bearish today uh, until I see some sort of a signal and I'm just not seeing it yet. So could, could get it soon. But until it's there, uh, you know, I, I I don't see anything bearish yet. Um, although, you know, I continue to think that we're in a bear market rally. Um, you know, there each day that it goes against me continues to uh, kind of eat at that case. So could be obviously, you know, nobody knows where the markets are heading, myself included. All we do is use the tools that we have in front of us to try to anticipate where, where that's heading. So, again, that's what I'm reading here on the SPY. We could overshoot this level. That might be the end of the rally. I don't know. Again, I think it's just prudent to kind of sit there and wait and see. So what I'm probably going to do is start moving to cash. Uh, I'm not looking to go long this market. I'm going to start moving into cash though on some of these positions. And, uh, and then I'll just look to jump back in if I get a signal. So as of right now, um, you know, looking to do that on several of these. Um, but there are a few short trades that I've called out that are working. So let's go ahead and look at that after the queues. Again, queues does this, is doing the same thing, just grinding higher, uh, you know, pretty much not moving a whole lot. If I zoom in here, you can see we're just kind of grinding higher uh, each day. I mean, over the last few days, we've gone up, you know, 2% or so, you know, you can see I mean, if I go all the way back to, let's say we go all the way back to the 15th, which is over uh, two weeks, we're up 5%. Um, so just kind of grinding higher each and every day. I don't, I'm not seeing any impulsive moves down. I'm, I'm not seeing any real impulsive moves up. All I'm really seeing is just a steady lift uh, over time higher. So 
we have to continue to just let that play out until uh, until that doesn't want to. So that's why I'm looking to probably step aside, let this thing do what it wants to do. You know, if we're going to make new highs, well, and at this point, I mean, we're basically right there in the queues. So if we're going to make new highs and get some sort of a melt up, some sort of explosion higher, I don't want to be short for that. So I don't want to ride. I don't want to ride that out. Although, you know, I'm not really looking to, to take that long either. Um, yeah, that could happen and there might be missed opportunity there. But unless I see some more signals in in other areas, uh, I don't want to bet that this is the start of a new bull market. A um, few things that I'm seeing that are not telling me that this is the start of a bull market is the bond market is, you know, holding near really low, you know, really low yields. Gold is up near 1700. The VIX is still trading up, uh, up around um, 25 or so. So we're still seeing lots of things that, um, you know, are, are still not telling me that we're uh, starting a new bull market. Um, although gold is uh, having a, you know, that's the thing today, I'm seeing kind of a reflation trade uh, I am seeing gold down 32 bucks. You know, if I look at CNBC here, you can see gold down 32 bucks. Um, we are seeing the dollar soften a little bit. And then, um, and that's probably what's creating a lot of the stock market. The markets are obviously rallying. The the uh, Russell's rallying pretty strong, which is a leading indicator and volatility is down. So in general today, just not seeing anything that helps the bearish case. So have to just uh, read that for what it is and understand that and look to probably step aside, let this thing do a little bit, you know, if it wants to move up a little bit more, we'll just let it and I'll look to jump on on the trade when I start to see some sort of an impulsive move, you know, that whether that's up or down, I'm just not seeing an impulsive move. I don't want to ride a low volume grind higher. Um, what I want to do is jump on the impulsive moves, whether that's up or down. Um, and I'm just not seeing it. So uh, for now, that's what we're gonna do. Now let's look at some of the short trades that are still working. I still am in um, XLV. Still, I'm still short this one, although, you know, yeah, and I'm down from it, but not by much. And it's basically just gone sideways for the last, you know, pretty much end of time. So we'll just continue to let that do what it wants to do. If it wants to take me out, then it can, you know, it, it'll do that. But for now, still sideways on that one. Um, and Walmart, this is still working. Um, you know, we shorted this up here at this 128. That's still working. Um, and you know, it's sideways basically, but it's be it's below where we shorted it at our entry price. So we're profitable on this trade. Continues to be sideways. So we'll let that continue to work. I mean, this is relative weakness. You know, in a market that's up across the board, uh, Walmart is down. So that shows relative weakness. So this continues to work. Uh, even though it's not down a lot today, uh, relative weakness. So when you get a weak day in the markets, maybe this will show even more weakness than, uh, than that and start to push this thing lower. NVIDIA surprisingly is continuing to work. Um, again, here's some relative weakness. We're down, you know, three tenths of a percent and the market is up. So NVIDIA is showing relative weakness. So that's good. Still short this one. This continues to work. Um, and continues to show that it is uh, it is weak, basically. Even on strong days when the market's strong, this is showing relative weakness. So still like this one uh, and still looking for this one to play out. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, Zoom, you know, I've been kind of eyeballing this one. I'm not, I don't have a position on this. Uh, you know, I'm not short or long. I'm looking to short it, but again, there's nothing, I don't see anything in the chart here that tells me that this is a good entry price. We have a bearish rising wedge right here in play. It's overshot to the upside. So what I'm looking for is some sort of a failure now of this breakout. If this is a, you know, if this fails and proves to be a false breakout, then that will show me that this was a, a, a shakeout move and we should head lower. Kind of like what Walmart did. If I roll out, going back to Walmart, this move right here was the false breakout above the big bearish rising wedge that I have marked out. If I go to the daily, that'll show it a little clearer. So something like this, here's your breakout, your false breakout essentially. Uh, and I'm looking for this to fail 
and break down. So that's what happened in Walmart. I'm looking for it to do the same thing here in Zoom. Some sort of a false breakout signal where it tells me that this was a shakeout move. And then we can look to establish a short here on this Zoom. Um, and, you know, fundamentally, I mean, if the if the economy, you know, if the markets are rallying on the economy reopening, then you're going to see uh, less less participation in Zoom as the economy and the world kind of reopens, then, you know, Zoom should not be continuing to rally like it is. So this is just a momentum trade. People are just buying it, riding the momentum higher. But fun fundamentally, you have to realize that, you know, if the economy is going to reopen, then uh, Zoom should not be uh, Zoom should not be trading. My whole bear thesis is not necessarily built on the fact that the economy shut down and is now reopening. My whole bear thesis was really built on the fact that you know we were in we were ultimately in a uh, a, a bubble a valuation bubble built in the stock market. We broke that bubble back in 2018. If I go back here on the weekly, and it's important to keep the bigger picture stuff in mind. You know, we broke that bubble back here on the S&P 500 in 2018. And so that's where I started to look for short opportunities as we started to break that bull market trend. And, uh, you know, and so far all the price action of 2019 and 2020 has been below the bull market trend of the last 10 years. So you can see that, yeah, we're chopping sideways. But ultimately, this could still prove to be a bear market rally. I mean, if this rolls over here and starts to work its way lower, then that's exactly what this was. You know, and at the time when you're in it, it doesn't feel like a bear market rally. You know, everything, especially today, everything feels bullish. Uh, and it's felt bullish the last, you know, week or so. Um, and so, and I'm seeing signs, you know, gold selling off and all that are, that are telling me, you know, that things are starting to get bullish. But Again, that's kind of how these things feel right before they roll over if this is a bear market rally. So ultimately, you kind of have to you have to anticipate what you think this move is. And then, you know, you can either be wait, waiting cash on the sidelines, waiting for some sort of a clearer signal or, uh, you know, you could be long if you think we're starting a new bull market. Uh, I don't see that because in the long term chart, I see a, here's your bull market right here in the chart. That's your bull market. This is a topping pattern that could prove to be a topping pattern, I guess, where you start to see volatility up, you know, moves up and down and chopping all around. And ultimately that could be, you know, a topping pattern or could be a consolidation period uh, before we make the next leg higher. That's always possible as well. Uh, this thing, you know, if this wants to run and do like a melt up move, and here's where it's probably gonna go. It's probably gonna run up and do another back test from from underneath of this trend line and that's going to put us all the way up there around three you know 360 in the s p 500 depending on when we actually get there or if we get there so it could do that um, again i'd be looking to establish a big major short right up at that level again if it wants to do that um, so we have to wait and see what that wants to do uh, I, I still think it's a bear market rally but again you know each day that goes by it's uh, continuing to kind of eat away at that at that thesis, so we'll see. Um, and for now, I'm going to go ahead and step aside and, and sit in, in cash uh, and and wait for a clearer signal. I mean, you know, if this wants to grind higher, then I, I'll let it and wait for that signal. When I get that signal, then um, you know we've had a lot of signals basically. Um, shorting signals that have proved to be shakeout moves or false breakdowns. I mean, if you look at this, we've had these little breakdown signals here where it recovers, breakdown, recovers, lots of little fake out moves uh, in this in this rally where it's kind of, you know, been the wrong move to be on the bear side um, so far. So we just need to continue to wait, um, wait for these signals. Uh, and eventually one will probably stick. Again, we also have, we have divergence in the, um, pretty much across the board, you know, there's momentum divergence. So momentum continues to soften. Uh, you have less and less, less and less participation and less momentum in this rally. So that is the setup for a big move down. We just need to see that signal. We're not getting that signal yet. We just continue to see buyer step in and, and buy buy the market. 
Uh, but you know, I, I'm an active trader. I'm able to jump into these, uh, you know, jump into the markets quickly. So it doesn't really do, doesn't really hurt to sit out and, uh, and, and just wait. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Let's move on to some other stocks. There's some interesting things happening in gold. Uh, let's take a look at gold. Oh, and oil. Let's look at oil real quick. Um, so here's XOM. This is just, you know, ExxonMobil, major player in the oil space. Here's what I see. Uh, I see a support line down here. We've got a couple reactions, reaction low, reaction, reaction. So we're kind of moving up that support line. And then the possibility, this doesn't really count, but the possibility of a bearish rising wedge. We only have two reactions though. So until we get a third, this is just a possible bearish rising wedge. Um, and you know, I, you could mark it out like that if we're gonna reject maybe somewhere right in here. But again, it, until we have a third reaction, there's just the possibility of this. So I don't want anyone to think that it is a bearish pattern yet. Really all it is is a is an upward trend line. Uh, and we do have a trend line down here. So we're kind of walking up that. We'll wait for a third reaction and see what we get. Then we can start to then we can start to trade off of this or see what's going on, see if there's any kind of uh, positions to take after we can establish some levels. Okay, <clears throat> so we're starting to see that pullback in gold that I'd been looking for. Uh, and, you know, I have not been long the miners, the gold miners. I've been looking for an area to kind of reload back into those. One thing you have to understand fundamentally that is if the market's going to go higher and, and move a lot higher, it's doing it basically on on kind of reopening hopes and 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 the fed pump and the one the way the fed pumps the market is through printing a bunch of cash printing a bunch of cash is negative for the dollar value which is net positive for gold so i continue to look for kind of deflation inflation trade ideas that's my whole thesis is you know, we're either going to have deflation or inflation. I don't know exactly which one could be a mixture of both. And that's why I've continued to look for shorting opportunities and, and then also gold opportunities. So, um, you know, if we're going to get the market moving higher on Fed stimulus, gold might sell off slightly due to the fact that people think you don't need gold if the market's going to do a lot better. But ultimately, the, the, the market's moving higher on on the fundamentals behind the the fed pump and so i think it's a buying opportunity in gold if you get pullbacks gold is in a bull market it has been gold's actually outperformed pretty much you know all sector s p 500 um you know gold's done a lot better in general so i mean the the miners are up huge basically over the last year and uh s p is is uh you know still down so gold's in a bull market we continue to look for buying opportunities in gold uh the trend is still intact so let's go ahead and look at the chart here's with gold you got to look at the bigger picture i think it's helpful to look at the larger time frames so when i see gold i see this 1570 this was a major level of support in gold back here and then it held as resistance when we broke above that um, you know, we, we've traded all the way up to, you know, 1750 or so. So if we get a pullback, we could easily pull back to this 1570. That's my area. <coughs> Excuse me. That's a great area to buy gold, um, I, in my opinion. And that would translate into the miners. So we look at some of these miners here. And, uh, oh, and going back, I have this uptrend line, but I only have two data points right here and here. So it's just a potential could fall right in line with this 1570. Maybe we go sideways a little longer and then come down. Um, or maybe we hold here and move higher. It's hard to say. But we're starting to see some weakness. We're starting to get a little bit of a breakdown in gold. So look at the miners. So this was the area I said 2250, really down to this $20 area is kind of my buy zone. So we're just now approaching it. Um, we just fell short of it this morning. Um, that first area of buying or my buy zone, per, personal buy zone. I get that back from here. You can see we had some resistance here. Um, and so that's kind of the first area. As we roll down, if I roll back down, you can see we've got a gap. If I go to the daily chart here, you can see here on Barrick, uh, we had a gap right here. So this is really that area. 
And this green line here held as resistance for quite some time. This 21, uh, you know, about $21 held as resistance for quite some time. And uh, it's it makes sense that we're pulling back here because you can see, look where we kind of stop short. Here's this little cluster right up here. And as when this was approaching this, I kept saying we're probably going to run up to there. And sure enough, that's exactly where we did. So that held as resistance. We had three attempts. That's a triple top basically on the daily chart that we tried to, to move. Couldn't. We're starting to break down. I think this goes lower and uh, probably is going to head to the, uh, you know, it looks like we might have a trend line kind of here. So yeah, we'll have to watch where this goes. You know, I'm looking to start buying this down at this $20 up to, tw you know, 21 or 22.50 down to $20. I'll look to start adding to the position and building a position right here. Um, and that's what I see there. Newmont, you can see. So Newmont, here's your support right here. We're just below it right today. We've actually, we broke it and have just been kind of chopping around underneath it. Not impulsive, it's not an impulsive breakdown, but it's, you know, it is trading below uh, support. So we'll see if that continues to show weakness. Um, you know, to me, it looks not very impulsive. I bet they recover that sometime today. Agnico Eagle. So I started buying a little bit of this one today. Uh, here's why I like it. All right, if I go to the daily here, you've got this gap right here. This held as resistance for a while, and then we broke above it, and it was support. And it, we're coming back down. You know, it held the support right here. We sh overshot it. We're coming back down for a retest right here, 57.90. So I started buying a little bit right there. I think that holds. We could even undercut and come and backfill this gap right here down to 54 bucks. I'd probably look to add a little bit more down there. But in general, looks good. Looks like we're just back testing support and uh, should run higher. If you th take this big plunge right here and you kind of have to throw that out of the picture because what happened there is the forced selling that when we got the first plunge, there was a bunch of forced selling in gold and gold miners. And it doesn't necessarily reflect what the decisions that wanted to be made or people's outlook on gold. It's really just the algos and the and the uh, brokerages margin calling everyone. So they were for forcing them out of gold positions to cover the losses in some of the other positions. So if you kind of throw out that huge drop, then you can see that basically we've got a lot of support down around this gap right here. Uh, and that should potentially hold. That was resistance back here. You can see resistance here and then we broke it. So we've got a lot of support level, support in this area. Um, so I like uh, Agne AEM right in the starting to become, you know, in this area, I think you're starting to uh, look look like it's got a lot of support right here. Here's uh, Yamana Gold, A-U-Y. Uh, we broke above this support level. You can see this is a daily chart. You have this descending trend line here, held it right here. And we recently just broke it right here. So there's the breakout and, um, you know, pretty impulsive breakout. Looks like we're coming down to probably back test this trend line. Let's go to the hourly here and see what we got. So there's the trend line right here at 457. Um, and, you know, I could easily see us coming down and tagging that again, you know, and hitting that uh, before, uh, you know, that's the area of support basically. So that's kind of what that one looks like. Kirkland Lake. Um, Kirkland Lake had this, uh, this is a bullish falling wedge, but we had a false breakout right here. So if you look at the hourly, here's your wedge that you're put in. This is a bullish falling wedge. Typically these break and they resolve to the upside, which is what it did right here, but it ended up being a fake out and it's since sold off and recovered back below. So that's pretty bearish, I think in general on this stock. Um, if I go to the daily, um, yeah, I mean, so it could chop around a little bit. These things do tend to like to do a lot of whipsaw moves, but, um, you know, in general, I see that as a bearish at first glance. So we could break to the downside in this thing. Um, and I'd probably be looking to target something like right there around 31 bucks. Um, Franco Nevada. Yeah, same thing. So we're breaking down um, in Franco, Nevada. You can see, yeah, I can't really make a pattern on this one. We're just kind of breaking down. 
So um, we'll have to continue to watch this. We've got a level of support here on Franco Nevada right there. And we're just about there. So see some support around 128.80. Uh, and we'll have to see, you know, if that's all that there is in the pullback. In general, you're seeing this across the board with these miners. Um, you're seeing a pullback. And that's um, consistent with the risk on uh, that's happening in the stock market right now. So, you know, risk on for the for the market and risk, you know, people are selling their gold and gold miners, um, which I believe is ultimately proving going to prove to be a buying opportunity. Again, gold is in a bull market. Gold's been outperforming, um, you know, outperforming uh, the stock market in general and uh, the miners have as well. So when you get pullbacks in a bull market, you buy at support. Um, and that's exactly what I'm looking to do. So that's it for the video, guys. I'm gonna wrap it up here. Uh, let me know what you guys think and hit the like button if you're finding some value in the content. Appreciate it. Catch you guys on the next one.